And what I was going to focus on mainly, of course, was the wildlife and specifically how the biodiversity is impacted with the Salton Sea. So as the inflows are reduced, the sea is changing, the salinity is becoming more inhospitable to a, a variety of species. And with a lower variety, we lose the biodiversity of the Salton Sea. The interesting thing is that biodiversity is what makes a strong ecosystem. And if the if our environment is healthy, then our communities can be healthy too. It's extremely important that we protect the biodiversity of all ecosystems, not just the Salton Sea, for the benefit of the wildlife and the people. You said that great. I think uh, we should just, you should do it, <laughs> please. I'm just not comfortable being on video. Oh, okay. Well. It's unfortunate that you're the the prettiest one in the meeting. <laughs> I mean, it helps. It helps for viewership. We 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 know it is what it is with data, but it helps. It certainly helps. <laughs> uh, it helps even more that you actually know what the heck you're talking. I know. About, which <laughs> is, you know, kind of important. Happens to be incredibly smart. Okay. Well, maybe we could do if there's any point that you do want to hop in. Jazz, you're welcome to, or if you feel like just turning off your camera, we understand too, but I don't think you would be a hindrance at all by sharing anything that does come to mind that you feel compelled to. We just kind of nailed the, the overall right before, so. So how's the water hookup going? Um, I got it connected yesterday. I had to be out of town for two weeks and uh, we were right to the bottom of the tank <laughs> after two weeks away. But anyway, I did hook it up and re what I did is just refill the tank from the water ho hookup because uh, I had left my truck, back of the truck water tank behind. I had to move a bunch of furniture from the Bay Area to um, down the Southern Cal. So that was a task. Anyway, um, it, it worked. Uh, I, you know, used the first 300 gallons of water that we've used yesterday. And the trees survived. Uh, they were, as I said, down to the bottom of the tank, but they hadn't gone dry, thankfully. Good. Thank you for coordinating that. What's the water hookup like? Is it a, a typical hose bib thing? It's a uh, it's a fairly large um, flow meter attached to the the output of the fire hydrant on the site, 
and it's got a fire hose type connection on it. Okay, so great. Yesterday not I something put that together, would be uh, easily meddled with. Well, I mean, we could, I mean, what I did in order for us to be able to use it is I put a adaption from fire hose down to garden hose. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then they ran a 150 feet of garden hose over to the water tank okay. uh, in order to fill the water tank. Uh, so I left the garden hoses out there in case Art might actually follow through on his promises to fill a tank sometime. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens. That also might make it easy for Carlene to help us out or anybody out there to water the aloes now and then. Okay, yeah. Until I build in some additional piping to do it automatically. Okay. Well, it sounds like we'll know in two weeks if we have some greater support from my ID. Yep, uh, that's about right. And Tom, I do want to emphasize that I believe we'll get more people helping what we're hoping if we're pretty concise. Um, just want to emphasize the lack of attention span with a lot of people on social media. Right. Short attention spans. This art's not coming today, so I really like to think we did start. The other thing I kind of wanted to touch on about how communities will be affected by uh, a, recede, a quickly receding Sultan Sea is the importance of projects like Desert Shores, even Pelican Oasis, because it's by revitalizing these neighborhoods and recovering the property values that's necessary to strengthen the communities in the Sultan Sea region. Thank you, Jasmine, and agreed. And Salton Sea, although much more expensive than it used to be for land and houses, is still one of the more affordable places in, in California. So a lot of people are still moving to the area. So that's- Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely true. And I think not only is it important to do these harbor restoration projects, but with less water going into the sea, it got me thinking about the grass bale projects where there's not a whole lot of water, they say, right? And yet they're drilling these wells in Bombay Beach and Salton City. And I have heard that at least in Salton City, they have had success getting water from the wells. So part of my comment to BOR was gonna be building emergency wetland habitat near communities like Salton City that could really benefit both the community from the enrichment of a green space and also the wildlife. Like Bombay Beach is lucky they already have that um, wetland area. And mm -hmm. I feel like West Shores deserves something similar too. So I know that they're focusing on the grass bales. The interesting thing is up in Owens, like the grass bales do work as a natural roughness to, to break up wind speed and, and help with uh, the dust not traveling far. The water, I feel, in West Shores could be better put to flooding the playa and allowing the, the vegetation to grow. I mean, you have to do maintenance to keep out the invasive species, but 
if you bring the water, the vegetation will come naturally. And I feel like in this kind of urgent emergency situation in the next two years, a project like that in Salton City, specifically where the, the playa has receded so much more because of the bathymetry of the sea, that would be a much more impactful project than the grass bales, which is really just a kind of, a, they, they want to call it a habitat benefit because they intend to plant, veg, plant vegetation. But really, if you add shallow flooding, it's going to be so much more productive and beneficial for the wildlife and, again, the communities. Agreed. Multi-benefit. <laughs> and wet absolutely just down. And there's supposed to be the requirement of half of the dust mitigation at salt and sea wetland habitat. And that has been missed and hidden and broken and distracted from. And that was a mandate yeah. from the California State Water Board, which was missed and misreported um, so that it would not have to be remembered in the documentation. And they changed the definitions of certain words so that they could qualify things that really are not habitat as habitat because something might live yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. You're precisely right. And especially with this, what is it, one or two year minimum delay at SCH, it's even more important now that we expand the wet habitat around the Salton Sea. Because if they're only filling under 200 acres at SCH, what, what is that really going to do? And they don't even want animals in there, they've said at this point, because of the ongoing construction. So I feel like they should use the water supply that they are finding at Salton City. And under this urgent situation, they should be flooding the playa and create some more shorebird habitat. It, it's not deep water habitat, but it'd be better to get water on the ground. That's, that's my point of view. And I'm going to share that with BOR. And especially with my hypersaline, we need an arc. We need exactly. some habitat now so animals can hang on until there is more quality habitat for them. They, they can't press pause on life. <laughs> they press That's right. So there, it's a choice. It's a yeah. Choice you can do it with a budget. That. You can't do it with living things. Yeah. Yeah. That's well said. Well, Tom, we have a couple questions that, uh, we feel you may have some great expertise in. Um, one of them is regarding the economic and social effects um, of these transfers, but I'm gonna start over. Um, I think what we need first is a general overview of what is going on. What is happening with this, this potential uh, transfer or hold of water? What is the agency involved? Why is this happening? And then we'll move into some of these other questions. And I think that was missed in our lineup of questions. But Tom, can you please share with us just a concise overview of why are we concerned right now? What is happening and what could make the salt and sea shrink much more rapidly than we thought in the first place? What was seen to be needed due to a long-term drought on the Colorado River that's been going for 20 years is a immediate uh, short-term reduction of water use, water demand on the Colorado River. And since the Imperial Irrigation District is one of the largest water users on the river with the uh, most senior rights to that water, uh, Imperial Irrigation District was asked to dramatically reduce the amount of water they use for agriculture in the Imperial Valley uh, to dramatically reduce their draw on the Colorado River this year in 2025 and in 2026 to retain water in Lake Mead behind Hoover Dam and retain water in Lake Powell uh, behind the Glen Canyon Dam so that those dams can not reach a dead pool situation. The impact of that most significantly is going to be on the Imperial Valley where we use less water to farm and on the Salton Sea, which over 90% of its water supply is drainage from farms. 
And this reduction of water use in Imperial Valley will dramatically reduce in a very quick time period the amount of water flowing to the Salton Sea, which will have serious environmental and health impacts for the wildlife and for the communities of people around the Salton Sea. Thank you for that. And so it sounds like, in theory, saving water is a good thing. The, the state and the region is in a drought. It's been for a long time. But the Salton Sea is a special place because it is maintained by all of this run runoff. So unless there's an overall plan for restoration that is actually followed, which we don't really see very well, and for successful habitat, which is followed, these cutbacks just mean, mean a lot of wiping out of species and increased air quality concerns, huh? There is a somewhat piecemeal plan called the uh, Salt and Sea Management Program 10-year plan that is intended to offset some of the damage done by a pre-existing uh, quantification settlement agreement water reduction that went into effect 20 years ago and has been in effect and has been reducing inflows to the Salton Sea. The Salton Sea has gone down almost 12 feet because of that long-term uh, quantification settlement agreement reduction. And we've seen dramatic increase in salinity, the loss of the great majority of the fish population, the loss of the great majority of the fish eating bird population and um, tens of thousands of acres of lake bed exposed with fine sediments, uh, some residuals of uh, agricultural and industrial chemicals in, in those sediments uh, that uh, at times blows into surrounding communities. And we've also seen uh, dramatic changes in in what's going on in the Salton Sea in terms of water quality, uh, not only its impacts on lar largely eliminating the fish population, uh, but also on uh, algal blooms and on the type of uh, creatures that can survive in an extremely salty uh, body of water. And we've seen very recently health impacts that researchers believe to be directly associated with the um, microorganisms uh, that are now living in an extremely salty salt sea. So how much those health impacts those health impacts include um, uh, accentuation of asthma, particularly among children in the community, and uh, widespread nosebleeds among children that, that live around the salt and sea. And it's not just the Salton Sea region, right? This this means northern Mexico, up into uh, Palm Springs, um, Riverside County, Los Angeles, San Diego. When the Salton Sea has a crisis uh, in dust and in uh, and in potential pathogens or um, biological materials that that uh, cause inflammation reactions in the, in the body, those things can blow a long way because at times we have 40 to 60 mile an hour winds here and it can kick up a lot of dust and it can blow for definitely tens of miles and in some cases hundreds of miles. And the other thing we have is if we have um, changes in the chemistry of, of the Salton Sea uh, that release hydrogen sulfide, which is a serious irritant We've had experiences where that uh, builds up in the Salton Sea, and then you have a sudden strong wind. And uh, we had a, a southeast wind a few years ago that blew hydrogen sulfide all the way to Los Angeles, and it was smelled all along the way. And uh, and it, it causes um, pretty unpleasant uh, uh, irritations in the eyes, stinging eyes, a hard to breathe problems like that. And in, in very high concentrations, it can actually kill, although we haven't seen that kind of level yet. Are these these dust storms also affecting the quality of the crops that are being meant to be maintained with saving water? 
The uh, Imperial and Coachella Valley together provide the majority of the nation's winter vegetable crops. Uh, they provide forage crops for animals. They provide uh, fruits uh, like uh, citrus crops uh, that are eaten all over the country and to some degree all over the world. And what you have is, is two problematic factors. When you have strong winds blowing dust off the bed of the dried, drying lake bed, one, fine particle dust. Two, you've got a certain amount of both agricultural and industrial chemicals in with that dust being blown onto crops that people eat. Uh, and additionally, you have a lot of so dried salt in that uh, lake bed, and that's being blown onto crops in the surrounding area. And all of those together uh, has a, a worrisome potential to do damage to, to crops and, and potentially to impact the um, both the production and the the saleability and and eatability of the of the crops that this area produces. Thank you for that. So we're we're talking about issues that we've been facing for years at the Salt and Sea, but what we're really concerned about now is just a ramp up in the timeline. Can you share with us how much water is currently going in, and if these um, measures are enacted, how much water could be going in soon? What would that be? How how much are we looking at? We're looking at a significant uh, reduction. So currently, um, we've we over the last several years we've had between eight hundred thousand acre feet to up to a million acre feet of inflow to the Salton Sea. Uh, this year, the year being half over, we might see if this all goes into place, but uh, something like a hundred fifty thousand acre foot reduction in inflow to the sea. Uh, and in next year, 25 and 2026, depending on how the conservation measures are done, if they are done through mostly through a following program, the impact will be somewhat less to the Salton Sea. Uh, but if the, if the uh, acreage um, and water reductions are done by on-farm conservation, then it's a one-to-one -one reduction in the flow to the Salton Sea. And it is the intent of the farmers in the area and, and IID, the Imperial Irrigation District, to do as much as possible by on-farm conservation because the economic impacts of that are less. If you, if you do conservation on uh, 200,000 acres of farmland, um, but you continue to grow crops, then the economic damage is not so high. But if you fallow 300,000 acres of farmland, there's no crops grown. There's no farm worker jobs. There's no tractor driver jobs. There's no repair jobs. So there's no truck driver jobs. There's no food processing, processing jobs. So the, uh, the impact is much greater economically on the local community so the, the preference of the local community for very sound reasons is to do this through on-farm conservation. The problem with that is it's a high impact on the Salton Sea. So if on-farm conservation is the primary measure used to uh, have the requested reductions, uh, and, and there is a request to get up to 900,000 acre feet of water saved over three years. Over it three is years. unlikely that all of 900,000 so acre feet of reduction is... over a three year period. So that's almost that's all a lot water going into the Salton Sea, right? It, it, what, it, what it would be is if you spread that over three years, you would see about the ma a maximum of about one third reduction or only two thirds of the inflow that we that we have had. Now, so that whether that can be achieved, miles. yeah, whether that can be achieved is questionable. Um, so a more realistic expectation this year being half over, you might cut 150,000 acre feet this year and the half that's left, you might see 250,000 acre foot of reduction uh, in the uh, next, couple of years in 25, 2025, 2026. Um, 
that would be a reduction of more than 25%. You would see less than three quarters of, of the, the inflow to the Salton Sea next year and the following year. And that will have very dramatic impacts. Uh, if you do that uh, coming next year and the following year, you, you're going to expose over 15,000 acres of additional hop of additional dry lake bed that much more to blow onto the uh, surrounding areas you could you could expose as much as 20,000 additional acres in just a couple of years and there's no possible way that the existing programs that the state has uh slowly tried to implement is ever going to be able to catch up to that level of impact so fast the other problem that's going to happen is if you cut the inflow to the Salton Sea as much as by 25% next year and in 2026, you're going to push up the salinity of the Salton Sea to 120 grams per liter of salts, total dissolved solids in the sea. Now that is more saline than any multicellular organism can survive. You will see 100% of fish population gone. You will see only the only multicellular organism that can survive in that level of salinity are brine shrimp, pretty much nothing else. Um, what you will see is uh, uh, an explosion of population of bacteria that are halophytic, meaning salt loving, and types of algae that are halophytic. And as we've seen in some ponds surrounding the Salton Sea, you might see the sea turn red, um, which while not necessarily dangerous in itself, is pretty unpleasant place to live next to compared to the blue sea that uh, you see behind me and Carrie and Jasmine that we are accustomed to. Thank you for that. So I'm glad to hear it's not all of the water, but just a major, major portion of this, which could send the sea out miles and get rid of most multicellular life and birds and the things that we really enjoy in the community. So I think we need to do something about this. We, we have a chance to speak up. We have a chance to have some of these environmental um, protections take place. If we are cohesive and organized and have some good suggestions soon, this is above and beyond what the state plan with their 10-year plan and species conservation habitat, not all of this was on the radar at that time. So these, con these conservation measures of saving water are unplanned as of years ago. And these, these are challenges that we didn't even imagine would be coming. So this gives us an opportunity. This has to open up some opportunities we didn't see coming as well as far as extra funding, as far as ways that things can be mitigated. We have to do that as a community. We, we don't really have a choice. Otherwise, y'all will get sick um, and we'll lose too many animals. We can't let that happen. So I, I think what we have here is a good understanding that this is a call for action and a call for help and a major call to save what we can of the Salton Sea and keep things alive as best as we possibly can as a community. So thank you both so much for going over, over these. Um, I want to ask if there's any more um, that Jasmine would like to share. She had some great feedback earlier. And if not, I'd like to go over just kind of a, a recap on main challenge. What can we do about it? Jasmine, would you like to uh, share your concepts? I'm good, thanks. All right, thank you very much. So, um, what um, I will say before we jump time. to the recap. Okay, yeah. All right. There, there are a couple of things that we could do very cost effectively and very quickly. Please. Um, one thing that we've seen is what we call emergent habitat. So as the sea recedes, the flow from drains and rivers that used to go straight into the sea um, is now flowing across um many, many hundreds of yards of exposed lake bed. And in some places over that shallow lake bed, it kind of spreads out. 
And anywhere that we get fresh or moderately salty water, we get plants grow and we get shorebirds enjoying that uh, that shoreline. And we and we get microorganisms that grow on the surfaces and, and in, within those spreading streams across the lake bed. And it it it's been called emergent habitat. You you see um, reeds and 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 low uh, bushes. Uh, iodine bush is very common and native to the area, and it just naturally grows uh, anytime anywhere you spread water out on that playa. And then you see a, a natural community of birds and lizards and, you know, the microorganisms uh, that they feed on and, and insects and a whole range of things um, up to shorebirds being the, the larger ones uh, surviving on that. And um, if we were to, you know, take the water that we have and spread it across the shoreline as it goes into the sea, there will be some additional evaporation loss but we'll have a big benefit in terms of uh, the wildlife that can live in it. And we will also have a, a benefit in the sense that um, lake bed that is kept wet by spreading out water um, doesn't blow. Mud, you know, dust blows, mud does not blow. So we keep it a little muddy and, and a little bit like a, a little marshy. We're not going to get dust blowing. We're not going to get... Um, you know, whatever is toxic within that dust blowing. And that, that would be a significant benefit. And even the dust alone can cause respiratory um, difficulties all the way up to lung cancer. So it's a concern. The other thing that, that we can do fairly quickly is we could create managed um, deep water uh, habitat within the sea itself by using an expansion of something called a limno corral or um, what's what's used in certain construction areas where you put a floating uh, plastic barrier that keeps the fresher water on one side and the salty water on the other side. You can use that to take the inflows that are coming and to maintain thousands of acres of less salty water in the Salton Sea itself at quite moderate cost. And you could restore and preserve some fish population and some area for fish eating birds. And because it's within the the, shore, the shoreline of the sea itself, it it by putting the water right in the sea itself there, it reduces the rate at which you see recession compared to some of the other plans of building big ponds and big burns and keeping it way up on the shoreline. We, by doing that fairly quickly, fairly inexpensively, we, we could reduce the recession of the shoreline and we could create and sustain habitat for fish and birds. And the benefit of doing that along the shoreline areas is if you've got fish eating the algae and, 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 and if you've got not a hypersaline environment, but more of a marine environment, then at least those areas near the shoreline of the Salton Sea go back to being what the Salton Sea was in terms of water quality uh, 20 years ago. And what that does is it starts to reduce some of the problems of microorganisms that cause rep respiratory inflama inflammation, reduce that problem blowing into nearby communities. So I think you can do a uh, benefit to the health of the people and to the wildlife at the same time by doing both the in-sea managed um, uh, salinity and, and, and oxygenation habitat and by doing the shoreline spreading of water that will naturally create um, wetlands on, on the shoreline. And where the water is, is flowing anyway, even without management, we see it happening all over. There's already thousands of acres of emergent uh, habitat that's populated by birds and fish in the streams and um, all you know all kinds of of organisms all the way up to coyotes. So it seems like the state have been putting some efforts together, but the bureaucratic process is inhibiting action fast enough to keep much alive. Is what. My understanding is that so far um, they have some good high quality habitat, but it's just not keeping up. 
but what you just mentioned is there's a lot of habitat that creates itself if you let water be and if you make the most of where water already is in the existing topography and i love that there's the ability to make um to separate fresher water from salt water that is such a quick fix such a quick fix it 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 is a very quick fix and uh we wish that uh, agencies would take such things seriously it's not as beneficial to their contractors that make hundreds of millions of dollars building stuff so that's one of the downsides you you don't you know get the support the political support of certain contractors that make tens of millions of dollars off of this stuff but you do if you take um fairly simple quick to implement low cost habitat creation and dust mitigation measures you can do a lot with a little little bit of money and you can do it quickly and if the agencies would take it seriously there's so much more that they could do so much more quickly the challenge that we've seen is that the state program is building very large scale, expensive, hard to build habitat. And it's great when they get it built, but the problem is they've got 4,000 acres mostly built, another 4,000 acres planned, but how much is actually up and running right now after five years into a 10 year plan? 167 acres of aquatic habitat, that's it. They we're supposed to have 5,500 acres of aquatic habitat up and running, but we're at 167. So the, 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 the official program is having an incredibly hard time keeping up. And when we ramp up the, the it would, if we accelerate the problem by reducing the inflow this year, next year, and, and in 2026, there is no way that the current plans and programs underway by the state are going to be able to keep up with that. They, they have no way to do it with their present plans. They have to rethink it. And as members of the community, as people who live either by the sea or in the region around the sea or in the state around the sea or in the country around the sea, or this includes Northern Mexico too, we need to speak up and say, hey, there are better ways to preserve our environment and protect our health, and we need to take action on it now, not 10 years from now. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, well, it sounds like there are a lot of things that we can do. So we can write letters, and we're going to put the information of where you can write a letter and contact this information. Uh, contact this agency here, there's an email address. Please share something that you learned in your own or from this video today. And this gives you the opportunity to have your voice be heard and help save some habitat and improve the quality of life and maintain the quality of life in this region. Um, this may be an unpopular opinion. If, if you're a farmer and you have a tractor, if you go metal around on the beach with the water that's inflowing into the sea and you make it zigzag back and forth, you create a lot of habitat. If you want to reach out to some agencies and say, hey, California doesn't have enough water anyway, we need to desalinate some water from the ocean and look for another water source because we're running out as a state and as a region. We encourage that as well. Um, so <laughs> we've learned a lot today, but I think what we need now is just a really, really quick recap. Um, Tom, in one minute, can you tell us the problem and what we need people to do to have an impact? Go. The problem is that on top of 20 years of inflow reduction to the Salton Sea, we're going to see a big increase in that this year, next year, and the year after in order to keep water in the Colorado River system. We recognize the value of that, but it's going to have a big impact on the Salton Sea by reducing inflow. It is going to add tens of thousands of acres of additional exposed lake bed. And it is going to push the salinity of the Salton Sea above the level that any fish or anything other than brine shrimp can survive. So we need to take action on that and we need to take action now. And we need your help in pushing our 
state, local, and federal representatives into taking action now to preserve our environment and to preserve our health. There are cost-effective, easy to implement, short-term measures that could make a difference in our health and in the health of the wildlife. And when wildlife are healthy, the people next to them are also healthy. We need to quickly save our environment and our health. We need your help to push our representatives into taking quick, cost-effective action to save the health and wildlife of the Salton Sea region. Thank you very much. And the choice is yours. No one's going to do it for you. This is your choice. And thank you for making it.